Hi everyone and welcome back to the last instalment on uh, Tuckman's uh, five stages of group development. Now in this episode we're going to be talking about the adjourning stage. So previously I'd mentioned that um, there, there's five stages. So you've got the forming, the um, storming, norming, performing. The fifth one is adjourning and it really means the close out of the group at the completion of the project. But in his original work in uh, 1965, Tuckman only had four stages. It wasn't until 1975 that he came back and said that adjourning, adjourning should be considered as its own stage. Um, so what happens in adjourning? Well, first of all, you've got um, a team that has successfully completed a project, whatever that might mean in your organisation. Uh, so it might mean um, if you've got a project team where the outcome was to write a report or produce a document, then it means that that document has been printed, bound, signed off, distributed, it's done. Uh, if it's a project, then the project has been built, commissioned, uh, the operators have been trained and it's been handed over, done. In all cases, this is it. The team has done its job, it's performed its function. Um, so first step is to celebrate that achievement because that's huge. That's the combined effort from multiple people over a long period of time to deliver something that no one could have done on their own. Um, so it's a great achievement. Um, one thing that um, people will often do at the end of a project like this is they'll organise a party or a barbecue. Um, even when I was in a high school theatre production, you could even think of that as group work. Um, yeah, they gave out um, little little awards, little prizes for silly things that people had done. Um, could be a bottle of wine for everyone. Um, there, there are lots of different ways that you can celebrate the completion of a project. Those are some of the ways I've seen. The scale of the celebration should match the project, but it should make people feel rewarded and appreciated. There might also be uh, some of the more um, administrative tasks that go along with project closeout. So it might be that you do have to do um, a closeout report or you might have to package all of your documents and hand them over to someone else if your team is finished, but another team is going to pick, up, pick, up, the, um, pick up the project and run with it from this point. Um, you know, there are all sorts of things like uh, you might do a financial review to see how the project compared to the original boat budget, how the project compared to the original program. Filing emails is another one. If um, there's been a lot of project correspondence over the months, um, getting people to actually save that in the proper location, um, organised according to topic or whatever filing name structure you're using on the project. All of that needs to be done and cleaned up, ready to go. So there really is that um, that feeling of cleaning house, of getting everything done, done and dusted. Um, now, so your role as leader is twofold. Um, firstly, you want to be responsible for that kind of party celebration aspect. You want to make sure that everyone feels included in that process, that the event matches the, uh, the tone of the project. It meant matches the, um, I guess, things that the team members would enjoy. Um, so to do that, you've got to have a knowledge of who's on your team and how they like to be rewarded. Um, and, you know, I say that because, you know, uh, you might get a group of people that much prefer an evening at the pub then they would prefer 11 o'clock tea and biscuits. So you've just got to, you know, match it to the people, do something that they will appreciate because um, vice versa, not everyone will enjoy going to the pub. Um, some of them wouldn't prefer to go clubbing. Some of them would prefer to have a weekend barbecue where they can bring their families and show the project to their families. So, you know, it just uh, consider that the celebration that you're uh, planning is appropriate to your team members. And, you know, if there's any awards to be given out, um, make sure that people are, you know, uniformly recognised throughout the team, or if not everyone gets an award, at least everyone comes away feeling appreciated. Um, and that can also be 
going to the party and making um, making an effort to speak to everyone and personally thank them for their contribution to the project. Okay, so that's the party side. For the administrative side, you just want to make sure that all of the jobs that need to happen, happen. So what are the risks? Well, one of them is that you've had a lot of people who have been very comfortable in their place in the team, knowing their purpose, and now suddenly there's this big unknown where they don't know what happens next. They don't know whether they're going to stay with the organisation. They don't know whether they're going to stay seated where they are or whether they're going to be moved somewhere else. Um, they don't know what they're going to be working on next. If you've got um, like contractors on the team, that might be it. They might know that on Monday they don't have a job anymore. Um, so there's that kind of element of the unknown that will be affecting people in a general sense. And then you might also have members of the team who really do like structure and just this shake up, even if they're permanent employees, they might just not, not, not like that sense of not knowing what's happening next. So, um, you know, you can only manage that to an extent, but at least you can be aware of that issue and make sure that you uh, talk to those people in a way that doesn't add to their anxiety. Um, yeah, and if you can, I mean, it would be great if you could provide some advice on, as to what happens next, um, or you could organise for someone who does know what ha what's happening next to come in and brief the, the team as a kind of a transition activity. Uh, this is probably more applicable to those projects where the project has been these people's sole focus for a long time. Um, you might also get groups where they only dedicate 20% of their effort to this project. So um, in that circumstance, they might be relieved that the project is finished because then they can shift their focus onto these other priorities that they've had the whole time that they haven't been able to dedicate the resource to. So just understand your team, understand their pressures, um, and understand if there is an element of uncertainty that might be bothering them that you've got a way to address it. Overall, I'm hoping that um, as a leader, you have um, tried to foster a sense of, um, oh, how can I say it? You want people to have been excited to work on the project while it was ongoing. And so um, I think at this end stage, you want to, you want to keep being thoughtful about how you talk to people during this phase because this is the last impression that you're going to leave with people before the team breaks apart. And the best outcome is if you can leave them with a, a positive recollection of the project and how it went. So just bear that in mind when you're, when you're talking to people, try and leave that, um, yeah, leave that positive memory for them so that when they look back on the project they're proud to have been involved there's nothing at the end that's marring their memory of it um yeah that's actually all i've got to say on a journey it's it's the simplest stage um so i haven't had to split this episode it's all fitted into one episode quite nicely um this, this has been the first series that i've tried so i've learned a lot even during the process of making all of these videos um, but there will be more. I've already got uh, my next series, I guess, you know, I've got the idea. I came up with it today. I'm quite excited about it. So, yes, I hope this was useful. Um, go back through, have a look at the other stages if you missed some of them. They're in a playlist called Tuckman's Five Stages of Development. So you can find that and that'll give you a really good grounding. And I guarantee you will hear people talking about the five stages of group development um, when you get into the workforce. It's, um, it's a reasonably familiar concept to people that have studied um, business particularly, but um, you know, generally I found that a lot of engineers are familiar with it too. So, you know, I think it might come up in first year uni or something like that. Um, if you, if you've liked this um, series, please subscribe to my channel. I'll put a little, a little face up there. Um, and then, you know, you can check out any one of my other videos. So yeah, I hope you found this useful. Good luck with your career. Subscribe, watch other videos and yes, tune in for the next series. Bye.